and we're at it again with another episode of Marketing Management and Money with your hosts, Ryan Murray and Ryan Owens. A lot of times in the past, you kick an episode off with asking me a question. We're going to flip that in reverse this time, oh. and I'm going to start off by asking you a question. Love it. I, uh, I had this experience with a, uh, a small business recently, and I, I want your take on it. Okay. A, what happens when a small business is so focused on one customer that they, that that's where all their sales come from eventually. Oh. Or so and let me give you a little example. Okay. This, this business that I'm working with, uh, they, they had a customer come to them with some unique, it, it was kind of a unique fit with this business, their need and this business's supply. Right. Okay. And all of a sudden this business or this this customer was like, Hey, we need more. We need more. We need more. We need more. And the business is like, sweet. We're making bank. We got this big customer. We got lots of orders. We're moving lots of inventory. This is awesome. And it just starts working and working and working, but there's danger there, right? Mm -hmm. When you get one customer that is way too much of, of your providing way too much of your payroll, (laughs) that's, that's, that's dangerous. So how, What's your take on that? How would you handle that situation? If you were this small business owner and you notice this customer comes in and all of a sudden they're like 20, 25% of your revenue. Right, right. So uh, I want to look at this from a couple different angles because it changes. Uh, you know, if you're a startup, then sure. you're going to be in a different boat. Okay. If you're an existing business, you're going to be in a different boat. Right. Okay. And, uh, you know, so w- when we say startup, um, like I'm, I'm talking about that uh, you're still trying to figure things out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And honestly, having like one, you know, solid go-to customer as a startup is not, all that dangerous. It's uh, it's actually very healthy, and and makes it uh, makes it very nice for the business to uh, you know to be successful, to be able to grow, to be able to grow. Yeah, because the 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 fact of the matter is, as a startup, you uh, you're kind of relying upon you know uh, investor capital anyway, and so you know having having a customer come in, even if they hold a lot of control over, you know, your sales, uh, it, you're still figuring things out. You're so new that, that it doesn't right. really matter. But uh, as an established business, uh, it, as you mentioned, it, it does start to, uh, it does start to cause problems. And, uh, uh, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of play this out. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a teaser here because uh, there, there's a very, very simple, easy answer. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go. You're going to make us wait. I, I'm, oh, uh, yeah, man. we're going to sweat it out for a second. All right, fine. <laughs> so the, the first thing that I want to do is I want to look at why is this so dangerous? And you talked about, you know, your payroll being tied up in <laughs> that. It doesn't have to be payroll. Right. You know? uh, yeah, I was kind of joking with that. And so, well, <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily like it. It, it happens, right? Uh, but it, it's just expenses in general. You know, exactly. If, uh, if you're expecting a uh, a business to you know kind of bail you out, um, you know there 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 was uh, this article that uh, that I saw recently. Uh, it was it was for Shopvac. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Shopvac uh, went under. Uh, recently, you know, yeah, and uh, yeah, I heard about that, and, and so the uh, uh, the the gist of it now, Shopvac is, at the time was a private company, so there's not a lot of lot of information, but uh, the gist of it is that they were trying to facilitate a deal with one large buyer, mm. and they thought that the deal was going to go through. And the buyer backed out. They went with another option. Mm. It completely pulled the business under. 100% pulled the business under because one buyer. And the crazy thing is they weren't even a customer. What? Like, but ShopVac was in a position. Now, unfortunately, due to a lot of what is going on with, uh, you know, with the pandemic, I'm sure that, you know, that there were some challenges that, that were happening. Sure. And again, I don't have all the information. I'm just taking, uh, you know, the information from the report. 
because it, it's a private company, and so, you know, you don't get to see the financials. Yeah, you don't get a lot of info on those guys. Right. Uh, but you can kind of infer from the report that, uh, that they had gotten themselves into a bit of hot water, and they were looking at uh, a single-source buyer to... Kind of bail them out. Bail them out. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, everything was looking good, everything was looking good, and then all of a sudden, deal went south, it was done, and they closed up shop. And, and, and so the, the risk is that you've got one entity that holds way too much control. Yeah. And, and so, you know, if you've, got, uh, if you've got an entity that is like 30, 40, 50, 60% of your sales, uh, Yikes. you know, that, that entity is going start, to start recognizing that. And it doesn't take much for them to recognize how important they are to your business. Uh, you know, Interesting. I've never thought of it that way. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, as they start recognizing that, that puts them in the driver's seat. Oh, yeah. Because all of a sudden they're just like, ah, you know, the whole expression, I need you to sharpen your pencil. Like, I want I want a better cost from you. Uh, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, you're starting to lose out on margin a little bit. Um, the other thing is, is if you've allowed one customer to become so dominant in your business, then, uh, it implies that there aren't a lot of other customers that you can draw from. You know, if one single source customer yeah. is, is really, you know, dominating that much of your business, then are there a lot of customers out there? Is it, uh, you know, uh, oh, and and so they probably recognize too that that you don't have a lot of options. You know, I mm-hmm. I, I, I I think back into the olden days, and uh, this is totally just me making crap up because <laughs> I I'm not doing any any research on this. But you got to think back in the olden days. Uh, you know, when uh, when someone was looking at uh, yeah, you know at getting married. And, you know, they're 20. I am so interested as to where this is going. <laughs> Holy cow. It started out weird, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go with the, well, back in the olden days when they get married. What? Where? And, where? And, and there's only, you know, 50 people in total in the town. Okay. You know <laughs> that you have two suitors to choose oh, from. Geez. Oh man, and, and and so it's not like you're choosing the suitor that you want, right? It, you're looking at the other guy and saying, "Well, I don't want him." Yeah, <laughs> yikes! Like I said, totally stereotypical. Sure, okay. I'm, I'm just making crap up, but I, right. you know that that's happened. Oh yeah, for sure, know? for and, sure. And, and and so that happens in business where it's like, well, guess what? It's me or him. So yeah, I. I don't have to treat you all that well, and you're still going to marry me because he's going to, you know, treat you even worse. Uh, and so, yeah, that brutal. Uh, but but it is brutal. It's unfortunate. It's sad, and it happens in business. Oh yeah, where you have, you know, these people that are just like, what else are you going to do? And they know it, and they use it, and they leverage it. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I I love to say all's fair in love, war, and business. Yeah, and and you know, and so that's I, that's my. Exa- I mean, how would you, how would you describe it if you didn't like my oh, eighteen hundred suitor example? Well, so I'm I'm going to come back to to the fact that so you said that uh, these customers know it, right? Like I think that it's it's entirely possible for them to find out in some way, shape or form, uh, but I've never, I've never, uh, I've never approached this problem with that as a variable, mm-hmm. right? It, for me, it's always been like, I've, I feel like the businesses that I've worked with, there have been enough other customers that it's not like this small business only has two customers and the one is 70% and the other is 30%. <laughs> You know, and and the one that's seventy percent is in close enough proximity that they know it, right? That yeah. they know that I don't, I don't know that I've ever uh, oh, oh, worked okay. with that scenario. So so let's let's tie this in for a second. Look at construction bids, right? Okay. 
when when you're looking at general contractors, they're going out for bid or subcontractors. I don't care. It's the, you know very similar yeah. field, right? Uh, you know, so your general contractor, they're going out for bid. Mm-hmm. Think about how much of their business is tied up in that contract. And, you know, if they haven't really, uh, you know, positioned themselves well with the way that they bid, you know, I mean, bidding is huge for that industry. And so if they haven't positioned themselves well, then they really start to get into trouble because they're just like, okay, I have to make this deal work or else, okay. you know, the entire business goes under. Now you look at that and people are like, well, okay, I can see where you're coming from with, with general contractors, but you know, I, I, I own a floral shop. And so does it, does it really matter for me? And I'm just like, yeah, because who is your top customer? Uh, the, uh, the, the funeral home down the street and, yeah. and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I get a lot of business from the <laughs> funeral home. And yeah. so all of a sudden, you know, you, you did something that offended the funeral home and they decided to go to the other floral shop and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Ouch. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so what I'm talking about your top customer it's not necessarily, I mean, you think about like the floral shop and it's like, well, you know, lots of different people buy flowers. I'm like, yeah, lots of people do, but where are they really coming from? If the yeah. funeral home is, you know, dictating 30, 40% of your sales, yeah, right. then, you know, they, they have leverage over you. And, right. and, and it might be friendly leverage where they're just like, hey, I, you know, I want you to, you know, put together a package for people. It's a referral base. And you're just like, oh, look how good this is, uh, you know. Uh, but is it good or is it kind of. Are you just getting deeper into the deeper into the deal? Yeah, because the next time they're just like, hey, uh, I, you know, I need you to I need yeah. you to sweeten the deal a little bit, yeah. uh, you know, and, and and I'm not trying to pick on funeral homes. I <laughs> Jeez. I'm, I'm just trying to show an example that maybe is less common. Sure. Uh, you know. Well, I mean, it all basically all this alludes to the fact that it's important to diversify. Right. Like you can't. I mean, if you can look at one customer and say, if I took them out of this picture, if they no longer existed, just poof, gone. Am I still OK? If you get nervous when you think about that question, <laughs> then you probably need to figure out a way to uh, decrease the percentage and not not to say that you're going to take business away from them. Maybe you're increasing business in, in other areas to even out that distribution, right? Mm-hmm. And you're absolutely right. And so now I'm going to disagree with you and me. Sweet. <laughs> so I'm going to play a little devil's advocate here. Okay. And I'm going to say, yeah, diversification is great, except for diversification is expensive. Right. If, so if, if I, so, sorry, I can't. No, go ahead. Okay. You're fine. I want you to finish. If I have a single source, you know, it, it costs more to get a new customer than it does to keep a customer. Right. So think about this. It's like, well, if I'm going to diversify, I'm going to have 100 customers. Right. Like, well, okay, you had to pay to acquire all of those 100 customers. At some point in your business, you know, I mean, maybe they're longstanding customers, but at some point you had to pay to acquire all of those customers. And if there's only one customer that you had to pay to acquire, there's a huge cost savings on, on your marketing. It's also, you know, think about target marketing and all of the time that you need to spend uncovering your customers' needs and Mm -hmm. understanding your customer. If I've got a hundred customers and I've got to understand every single one of them and I've got to cater to every single one of them, that's that's very time consuming. It's very costly to the business. If I've got one and I know what they like and I take care of that one you know, and then every customer is just slightly different with their right. wants, their needs, you know. And so if I'm, uh, you know, if I'm trying to service uh, all of these unique situations, more cost, 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 cost. And so my diversification is making my business cost me more. Yeah. And so now all of a sudden I'm less competitive. Right. Because my cost structure is high. Right. Well, and that's what I was, uh, this is actually the realm that I was going to take this in anyway. So I got this. Oh, Easy. okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, absolutely. Acquiring new customers is expensive. And, and even if you are, uh, say you're not necessarily just out 
acquiring hordes of new customers, uh, but say that you want to cater more toward a customer that you already have that takes up a smaller percentage of your business. So mm-hmm. you want to grow that. Sure. It's still You still have to put more resources into that. It still becomes expensive in terms of money, time, effort, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And so maybe it's not even looking at uh, going out and acquiring new business or growing one another customer that you already have. Maybe it's uh, increasing your efficiencies in supply chain or some of these other customers that you have. And so it's like if you uh, if you're a remodeling contractor and you're laying carpet, right? Okay. You get paid per job. If you can increase your efficiency, then essentially you could do more jobs. You're getting paid more, mm-hmm. right? And so then, but if, if you're doing that in residential homes and that's, we're going to classify residential homes as like one of your customers or sources sure. of income, right? Sure. Um, if you can increase your efficiency there, you now bring in more revenue there and that becomes a, a larger percentage, mm-hmm. right? Which yeah. then <laughs> decreases your percentage away from this other disgusting, horrible, ugly, unsuitable Marriage partner. <laughs> That's a bad analogy, man. Yeah, yeah I'm like it's such a bad. Vi- no, it's not a bad analogy. It's a, a horrible visual. Like these people back in the day. It's like, ugh, I can't even imagine what that choice must feel like. It's got to be horrible. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm way too stuck on that. Anyway, <laughs> you know. So you look at it and you're like, okay, those who are riskier have a competitive advantage. The The riskier business provides a competitive advantage for them. But I'm not sure I follow on that one. Well, okay, the competitive advantage is the fact that they can streamline their customer. If they have one customer who oh, is yeah. 80% okay. of what I'm they do – you know, I mean, you right. just take care of that one customer and it's super easy. There's, you know, the economies right. of scale because you're doing the same thing yeah. over and over again. Yeah. And, you know, uh, so if I have a very small customer base, I actually have a competitive advantage. Right. If I diversify, I lose that competitive advantage. And so, but now, I, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna flip back and, and I'm teeter-tottering on purpose here. But now you're going to exist in another 10 years you're not going to disappear in 18 months so, so but it goes back back to the, the fact that if i have a single source customer you know that customer they have options and so they expect you to give some of that competitive advantage back to them yeah right and uh, there's like well wait a second you know like i'm paying you good money so i expect you to provide additional services for me Yep. And, uh, you know, and that that's where y- you picture man, the, 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 the ideas that are going through my mind. I, you know, I, I, I picture the mobster who's like, I own this place. You do what I say, you know, kind of business mentality. <laughs> okay. How, how was my mobster impression? It was, it was okay. Everybody knows that I'm not a mobster now. I just love that we're moving through the, <laughs> the centuries. Time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just came up into the thirties. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And, and and so you know, hey Tony, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know that that that's what I'm looking at. So I want to put out a strategy that is kind of a a unique strategy. It's a simple strategy, but it's a unique strategy to how you can have a single source customer or a dominant customer without allowing them to get the stranglehold on you. Nice. Let's hear it. So first off, we got to break it down to percentages. At what point is that customer too big to fail, if I use an old cliche from uh, the uh, Great Recession of 2008? <laughs> you know, so, so at what point is that customer too big to fail? I'm going to say anything above 20%. A fifth, yeah. a fifth of your business can go to any one customer, and I am going to argue that you can still be 
pretty well diversified. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you start to give up more than 20%, uh, I'm going to argue that you now are making yourself vulnerable. And obviously, the larger the percentage, the more vulnerable you become. Yeah. But uh, yeah, 21% vulnerable. 20, or 20%, you're okay. That's where I'm putting the cutoff. Some people have different tolerances. Sure. That's fine. But right. honestly, I defy someone to give me a strong argument that above 20% is smart for a single source customer, right? Ooh. I, I know. Like, put it out there. <laughs> I know, yeah. There's some guy out there that's like, I got this. <laughs> so we're getting an email in a few minutes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so at... Uh, at 20% or above 20%, uh, I'm getting too risky. But there's there, there there's a hidden gem in that 20%. All right. And that is just keep your expenses as if that customer were 20%. Right. Boom. Done. That simple. So, you know, a, a lot of people find themselves in these situations where there's like, I want to diversify but do I start telling them, no, sorry, I'm no longer going to accept your money yeah. <laughs> because, uh, you know, be, be, because I... Your money is too risky. Yeah. <laughs> I mm, Nobody's going to tell that to the mobster. <laughs> You're too good of a customer, so we've decided to back off. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and, and yeah. so when you have these big customers... You don't want to tell them, no, no, you take all their money. If they want to keep buying with you, you take all of their money. That's great. But you spend as though they are at 20%. So you look at 20% of your expenses and you say, okay, can I manage all the rest of my business with the rest of my customers that I have? And if you keep it at that 20% threshold, you're, you're fine. So what do you do with the excess money? That's what I was just going to ask. <laughs> there are two things that you can do. Buy a yacht. Buy a yacht. Whoop. There are three things that you can do. <laughs> <laughs> Keep paying the mobsters. <laughs> there are four things that you can do. <laughs> this is a fun game. <laughs> there are two things that you can do. One is if you're in that sweet spot, you bank it. Like that's... That, that's yeah, just, incre increase your cash reserves, right? Yeah, yeah. That's just bonus money, and you just bank it, and uh, you know you bonus it out to your employees. Whatever you want to do, like you, you just bank it, and, and, and that is a great strategy. I mean, picture this: if you've got this big old cherry on top, and you're able to, you know, just give these fat bonuses to all your employees and say, hey, you know what? You take care of that customer. You keep growing that customer. We're going to do some fat bonuses. I'm yep. banking it. We are, we are, we're flush with cash. We are a great business right now. Yeah. If you're in that sweet spot, kudos to you. Uh, we would love to have you be a guest on our show. Yeah. Uh, if you're not in that sweet spot and you're like, I can't afford – to operate my business unless I use all of the, you know, uh, all the money coming in. I, I have to, I have to treat them like a, you know, a 60% customer. They're just mm -hmm. too big. Yeah. Then what you need to do is you need to take all of the growth that you're getting from this customer. Because if they're not growing, they're shrinking, then they're going to naturally move down to that 20%. And you yeah. keep working it that way, right? Right. But if they're growing, you take the growth and you take the money from the growth and that goes into an aggressive marketing campaign mm -hmm. to diversify the rest of your business. Because you yep. still do have to have some level of diversification in your business. Right. It needs to be there. It's the safety net that allows you to be in business longer than six months. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and I, and I love, I actually, I actually really like that analogy, <laughs> the safety net, because it, it really is. That's what... I mean, you can't you can't build a, a skyscraper with one pole as your foundation, right? <laughs> right? You can't stand on a stool. Well, I guess some talented person probably could. You can't stand on a stool with uh, one leg, right? Mm -hmm. I guess let me refine that. The stool can't stand up by itself with one leg, right? And even if you're that talented guy that you're like, look at me, I'm standing with one leg. How secure are you really? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Like, the breeze could kick up to yeah. a little too much in your toast. Yeah, you're pretty vulnerable. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, I, I love that approach of 
looking into other ways you can you can achieve this other than working harder and selling more and selling to this other guy and finding new customers, you know, because that's that's not the only answer. And yeah. I think too many entrepreneurs, small business owners get caught up in that, that, well, how am I going to get out of this? Well, I got to go find something else. I got to go find more. And, 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 and I will tell you, I see this happen a lot because there are some really big players out there and they all profess to support small businesses. And I'm using the term profess because honestly, do they really? Uh, do they really? Yeah. No. Uh, and and so, you know, I look at some of these big online giants, some of these big retail giants, and everyone's all excited to get their product in with these guys and be like, yeah. oh, look, they're doing so much for me. And I'm like, mm, are they really? Have you looked at their track record? Have you looked at how many small businesses they've actually put out of business? Yeah. You know. They're like, ignore the boneyard. <laughs> <laughs> and and. These guys will do it. Yeah. You know, these big behemoths of companies uh, that, you know, they they will really just beat up small oh, businesses yeah. because they know that there's always another one, you know, next in line. Yeah. And, yep. and, and so don't don't get beat up. Don't put yourself in that position right. where you are so vulnerable to these big guys because what will happen is you're going to get some, you know, some new – up and coming rookie that enters the big corporation and they want to leave their mark. And so they're going to push you around a little bit and they don't care. Oh man. I've seen that so much. I've been in meetings with buyers that it's like, dude, you've been here for like three months, man. What are you, what are you doing? Yeah. And the, and it totally is just like, well, guess what? I'm the one with the control here. I have power because you have to be in with us because we're the big guy. Mm -hmm. And you want to be in a position that if you ever step into that meeting and that meeting starts to go south, you just walk out and you'll be like, huh, see ya. Yeah, exactly. I, I guarantee they'll be like, what? 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 You don't walk out on me. Yeah. Uh, how, how did that happen? You'll never get in with us again. It's like, dude, I'll talk to the next guy in six months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so be smart, be wise, and, you know, just, just get it done. So with that, Hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I'd love to hear some feedback on this because this is a this is a really interesting topic. So you know, if you've been in that situation, good or bad, please reach out to us. Uh, you can connect with us, Ryan at marketingmanagementmoney.com. If you love the content that you have and you want to go a little bit deeper, you can catch all of our trainings, tabletwise.com. Just search Marketing Management Money. You'll see a full array of uh, training programs that we have. There's some awesome free stuff on there, uh, and there's uh, plenty, plenty of premium. So yeah. whatever you're in the mood for, uh, we got you covered. We hope you enjoy listening to our show, Marketing Management and Money. Take control of your business today. Go to tabletwise.com and search marketing management and money for the clarity you've always wanted. Be sure to stay tuned for new episodes on the first and third Wednesdays of every month and make sure to subscribe to be notified when we release bonus content such as interviews and short discussions.